Good afternoon, everyone. It's Dragon Man 44. I've got a guy on Facebook. I don't know him. His name is Chuck. I have no idea who he is. He's on one of the forums I follow on, or groups I follow on Facebook. He's uh, got a little stationary cutoff saw, like this one here used to be. And he's posing questions about should he make it a right angle drive or should he power it this way or that way or whatever. And uh, so many of the comments concerning the, the saw are, are just so negative about how dangerous they are, how how bad they are, just, just need to go buy a chainsaw, forget that thing, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And other guys are somewhat encouraging and everything. And um, I thought I would make just a little bit of a video uh, showing mine that I converted to a right angle drive, almost identical to his, a different brand, but it's still the same thing. It was originally meant to be a stationary rig powered by a power source other than what's attached to it, uh, except for by the belt. And I thought I would just do a few minutes to show him how safe these things really are and how one that's connected correctly to the uh, to the right angle drive in one of the ways that I think are correct. There are many, many ways to do it and many ways are correct. There's all kinds of variations, but I thought I would spend a few minutes and cut just a little jag of wood and toss it into the woodshed, you know. This is a 1982 B7100 four wheel drive Kubota. It's a manual transmission, it's not a hydrostatic drive. I've had it since it was brand new. I've got it coupled almost permanently on this old buzz saw which was a stationary buzz saw that was driven into the ground with pegs and driven off of a, a one cylinder engine or some other type of power supply. And years and years ago, 20, I didn't even know, I, I couldn't even guess, 20, 25 years ago, I converted over to three point. I built this three point A frame right here for a category one uh, three point lift. And I got this right angle drive off of a John Deere haybine, complete with slip clutch on the output shaft. The output shaft then goes, goes on over through a carrier bearing that I've got mounted right behind that, that second brace here. There's a carrier bearing mounted right there. And I put two eight inch diameter V-belt pulleys side by side, double shivs. So there's four shivs on the outside creating friction for that flat belt. So then the flat belt drives the arbor, which is where the flat belt used to be off of the single cylinder engine or the make and break engine or the uh, power unit, um, like a tractor with a flat belt and that's what drives my arbor. Now I run this wide open, which is 540 RPM. That is a 1.1 um, a to one ratio right angle drive. So at 540, I'm turning at 540 plus 54 or roughly 600 RPM on that, uh, on that arbor. And there's a slight difference in diameter between the eight inch down here and the, and the eight inch up there. Uh, so I'd have to calculate that out to know exactly what the RPM is, but it's roughly 600 RPM. And we're going to run a few rounds and we're going to see how um, how quick and efficient and how crazily not dangerous these dangerous rigs are. They're only dangerous to people that never use them and always hear the horror stories about them to people that use them all the time. There's absolutely no danger whatsoever.
So there's just a couple of minutes of sawing a little bit of wood. It gets boring if you do it too awful long, you know. Uh, boring for you guys, not for me. But uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of um, self-proclaimed experts that have been around these their whole life, seen guys cut their arms off, legs off, probably even some of them cut or cut their heads off at their throat. Uh, but sincerely, I've never had a single accident other than a splinter or something under my thumbnail. Uh, but at any rate, like I said, there's absolutely nothing dangerous about this. I know people are going to complain more than likely about how close my arm is coming. You ain't up here seeing. You can't see the perspective from the camera and how close or how far away my arm really is. And if you notice, if you pay attention, just look at the video, you'll see virtually every time my hand is on this piece of metal right here. Well, my hand is on this because that's how I'm controlling and making sure if I slip or fall or if it goes into the blade, that handle, that hand on that iron is going to keep that from happening. I've been doing this too long to, uh, to even be concerned about it. It's just second nature. So uh, at any rate, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm going to go about the business of uh, cutting just a little bit more now and finish this up, get another little jag on the forks and do that too. Because what we like to do in the woodshed is we like to mix a mixture of split wood and pole wood, you know, because the pole wood, whenever you burn it, 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 it obviously doesn't have the heat content and it burns up a lot quicker. So that's why we try to get a mixture in there, you know. But uh, this section here is 12 foot tall in the back end and that's about the uh, fifth or sixth row out. And we still got five more rows, these four here, plus one additional one in the front that hasn't been started yet, even in front of this little one here to fill up. And each section of this, uh, these, this shed holds uh, between 11 and around 12 cards. That's enough of the uh, exercise for today for y'all. Click on another video and watch that. And I'm gonna go back and spend a little bit of wood. This is Tractor Man for cutting a little bit more wood. This is Tractor Man 44 and I'm out of here.